So the graph below shows the depopulation in the Alfred and Zor district municipality. So villages in this district municipality in the Eastern Cape cover thousands of hectares along the N2, which is a national route. Extreme social and economic poverty exist in these villages. Now, this is a common problem in many other parts of rural South Africa. The Alfred and Zor district municipality is the most impoverished or poor rural region in the country where more than 65% of people live below the poverty line and 70% of the population is not economically active. Well, perhaps they're not formally employed or they're not even plying their trade in the informal sector. These extreme social and economic conditions are made worse by limited access to services, especially water, healthcare, and education. Few economic activities have a negative social and economic impact on the area. Rural settlements are no longer an attractive option for rural dwellers. So, 1.3.1, what evidence on the graph indicates that rural depopulation has been taking place since 2020? Well, since 2020, there's been a decline in the population of rural areas. 1.3.2, name two social services in the extract that are lacking in the Alfred and Zor district. So water, healthcare, or education, we've already underlined it, as you guys can see over here. 1.3.3, give two possible reasons for the lack of social services in the Alfred and Zor district. Well, there are quite a few here. Let's, um, let's list three. So maybe there's just simply like insufficient municipal budgets. Or in other words, just, there's just no money. Poor infrastructure, that's always one to have in your back pocket. It's relatively generic. You can plug it in in most places. And lack of skilled professionals. Also anything along the lines of corruption, theft, vandalism. Um, you would have definitely scored the mark. 1.3.4, why do rural settlements experience a negative economic impact as a result of rural depopulation? And this one is quite important. So firstly, young adults move away. That is your workforce. So young adults move. There's a decrease in the available labor pool. Let's just draw a pool there. What do you guys think of my pool? Yeah, would you swim in it? Pro probably not. Hey? It's looking rough with two Fs. Skilled people leave, so there's just a decrease in skilled labor. There are more old people left behind. There's a reduction in food production. It also reduces income from exports, so anything along those lines would have scored you the mark. Next, sustainable, uh, sorry, suggest sustainable measures that could be implemented by municipalities of rural areas to reduce this economic impact. So, 1.3.5, there's quite a few here. We need to name any two. Uh, so two answers with a pretty decent substantiation, not as heavy um, as the way you would in your home language, if you're doing like English or Afrikaans or even Zulu home language. So they could provide more basic services. So an increase in basic services. Uh, they could provide greater infrastructure, create more job opportunities. So just two are fine here, but an increase in job ops. Job opportunities, attract industries to rural areas, um, maybe stimulate the development of home industries, promote sporting and cultural events, anything along those lines would have scored you the mark. So 1.4, refer to the extract, photograph A and for, uh, not photograph B, that's sketch B, sorry. That's our photo, that's our sketch, based on commercial decentralization. So a CBD otherwise known as Central Business District, not that uh, green stuff they be selling in the stores, is the original commercial business center of a city. There are now many outlying business districts, OBD, outlying business districts, caused by commercial decentralization. Now, apart from the physical expansion of urban settlements that made CBDs more difficult to reach, the causes for growing decentralization of businesses include high rents, crime, pollution, and lack of parking. Now, well-located, decentralized nodes remain sought after for businesses looking for secure premises for their companies, park-like surroundings, and sufficient parking facilities. So, a lot of lists here. Office parks, neighborhood shopping centers, and regional shopping centers are often close to sought-after residential areas, otherwise known as suburbs, which provide a customer base. So, 1.4.1, define the concept commercial decentralization. Well... Simply put, guys, this is the movement of businesses outside of the CBD and into the suburbs or outlying 
business centers. So the big businesses are just moving out uh, of the center. They are decentralized. Question 1.4.2. State one factor evident in the CBD, the central business district, which is our photograph B, that encourages commercial decentralization. Well, if you just look very carefully, look how many buildings there are in such a small space. So high building density. So 1.4.2. High building by building no that was that was so bad i'm sorry that was a terrible joke high building density two um there's a lack of space as well as you guys can see there's not much space between buildings it's uh it's giving histogram so answer histogram no i'm joking just say lack of space you'll never find a teacher teaching geography who says things like it's giving one of a kind one of a kind and uh, secondly it's a lack of aesthetic appeal as well um, this one was optional but just lack of aesthetics it's not good looking but you are you are good looking don't worry about it if you were in photograph b um you'd be good looking you would stay there okay hashtag self-esteem boost what a confidence booster okay 1.4.3 how do high rentals and crime mentioned in the extract lead to increasing commercial decentralization so in 1.4.3 you would have need to needed to structure your answer a bit better so firstly let's start with high rent and let's put a bit of meat in our answer so people cannot afford high rentals it's expensive and this would decrease the profits of the business so decrease profits along the lines of crime well this is a key one if you live in a high crime area, insurance is going to be expensive because there's a greater likelihood something bad is going to happen. So insurance becomes expensive. And just in general, customers feel unsafe. And there's a loss of stock, damage to businesses, decrease in profits. Anything along those lines would have scored you the mark. 1.4.4. Explain why neighborhood shopping centers are an attractive option for the location of businesses. So a variety of shops under one roof makes shopping convenient. Think of just very old markets from way back when. Uh, the close proximity to customers, markets, employees, it saves time and cost. So if you just look at this one, it's more a matter of convenience and proximity. So closeness to something, close proximity. That's enough, but also, again, aesthetic appeal, parking space, better security, Rent is a bit more affordable as well. And 1.4.5, how can the increase in the number of neighborhood shopping centers have a negative impact on businesses in the CBD? So in 1.4.5, let's just slot it in here. So businesses close down, uh, owners lose profits. And again, that was all you needed, but also maybe the value of the property decreases. Maybe buildings become vacant. This could decrease buying power. There could be increased costs here for security or insurance or maybe buildings become a bit more dilapidated uh, dilap that was that was terrible i'm so sorry but buildings become dilapidated um the buildings aren't too attractive anymore they could become you know like possible drug dens anything along those lines don't write drug dens in your exam but yeah buildings suffer from dilapidation okay i don't like to edit out my mistakes ever i'm a real person who be making them mistakes son or daughter or maybe you're just non-conforming to gender i don't know it's 2024 but i respect you nonetheless thanks for watching the videos let's move on the impact of public transport on traffic congestion so the use of public transport is encouraged because it reduces traffic congestion now in south africa the most common form of public transport is the use of minibus taxis you you guys we know this all too well very dangerous driving vehicles those ones although public transport example minibus taxis and buses play a valuable role in reducing the number of private vehicles on the road it is associated with a number of challenges and these challenges are associated with economic injustice to commuters so 1.5.1 according to the source which type of car would create the most traffic congestion um cars or private vehicles because there's 60 commuters here in 24 cars but there's 60 commuters here in five minibus taxis well the cars are a lot smaller than the taxis and 60 commuters in a bus so are they encouraging the use of public transport here 1.5.2 give a reason for your answer well simply put there are just more cars being used 
to transport 60 people. So obviously, they would take up more space. 1.5.3, how can improve public transport systems decrease traffic congestion? Well, there's quite a few answers that we can list here, but simply, there are fewer cars on the road. There's greater availability of public transport. T is public transport. There's more efficient public transport. There's a greater increase in accessibility. There's dedicated public transport. Anything along those lines would have scored you the mark. And last question, in a paragraph of approximately eight lines, explain why the use of public transport, such as minibus taxis and buses, could be an economic injustice or concern to commuters. Now, with these eight line questions, I strongly encourage you to skip a line and just write four lines because that's still going to be eight lines and they can't mark you down. So skip a line. Okay. Thanks for watching the video. Bye. No, I'm joking. That was a terrible joke. If you do that, I might just have a heart attack and then no more YouTube videos. Please, it was a joke. As a belief. So um, there's quite a few ways we can structure this. So let's do it. Have a look on the left. If you looked on the right, just look on your other left. <laughs> Too many jokes here. So. It is costly and has a negative influence on people's budgets. So it's just, it's costly and it has a massive influence on people's budgets. Um, commuters sometimes need to change to several modes of transport to get to work. So there's just, there's many connections required sometimes, you know, depending on the individual. Uh, petrol price increases affect the budgets of commuters because if petrol prices increase, transport costs would go up and... Well, overall, the commuters would battle. Um, irresponsible drivers endanger commuters. So, yeah, that's a big problem we have in South Africa. Irresponsible drivers. Uh, they endanger commuters' lives with just poor driving. And this negates insurance claims. Um, sometimes commuters will be late, which results in job losses or violence and strikes in, public, in the public transport industry, which we have in South Africa. Uh, results in the loss of income. I mean, the taxi stripes are stripes. The, tra the taxi strikes are prevalent here. So yeah, anything along those lines would have definitely scored you guys the marks.